We are truly blessed. Charles Holt. So last week, Daylight Savings Time arrived. We sprang forward, and yes, we did lose that extra hour of sleep, but look what we gained. The days seem longer, don't they? Because it's light when we come home from work, and there's this feeling of wanting to do more, and tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, and this week begins spring. Adrian Cook said, St. Patrick's Day is an enchanted time. It is a day to begin transforming winter's dreams into summer magic. Sounds so Irish, doesn't it? It's just so lyrical. So I think what happens when, when the days begin to get longer, when, when there's more light, we're called to action. And sometimes that may take the form of spring cleaning, of going through our homes and clearing out the cobwebs and getting rid of old stuff and, and really do a deep cleaning. And the question I propose today is, why not also have spring cleaning for the soul? You know? And that means like letting go and making room, but with intention. So we started March with the idea of letting go and holding on, that it's a, it's a process in life. We, we are doing it every single moment. We are letting go when we exhale. We are taking in and holding on when we inhale. When we are born, we are letting go of the womb and we are taking hold of life. When we die, we are letting go of this body and we are taking hold of life after this body. So it is a, a process. And we talked about the idea of how it's important to feel our feelings and emotions because that is one of the ways that the body and the soul releases and lets go. The truth is that when we let go, what we are doing is giving. And giving is a spiritual law. And this law applies to prosperity, it applies to time, it applies to love, it applies to our talents. So the truth is that if you need love, you need to give what? If you need friends, you need to be a... If you need money, you give... And if you need time, you give time. It seems very counterintuitive, I know. But Jesus said, give and it will be given for the measure you give will be the measure that you receive. So spring cleaning then for the soul is about making room through giving and through generosity. So Meg, if you could drop the screen. So I'd like you to think about in your life right now, what is lacking for you? Maybe nothing, and that's great, but you know, most of us have something lacking somewhere. And so whatever it is that is lacking is probably what you need to give. Now we have seen this video probably not for a couple of years. It's only two minutes long, but for me it visually demonstrates this idea of giving and receiving. At today's community church, we've got a culture of generosity. The Bible says a man reaps what he sows, so it's got to be best to sow generously, right? Think of it this way. If I want more friends, then I've got to generously sow friendship. Maybe I buy someone a coffee, or maybe I invite some people to my house. Pretty soon, I've got a lot more friends. Or, say my cash is running low. Instinct says to save. Maybe even stop tithing. But the Bible says give even more. It doesn't seem to make sense, right? But God says this stuff over and over. In Proverbs he says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, whilst the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I know which one I'd choose. If we take God out of the equation, it's absolutely crazy. But when I compare the amount of times I've been wrong to the amount of times God's been wrong, I think that maybe I need to trust God's promises. And God promises that if you give your life away, you'll find life given back with bonus and with blessing. 
Giving, not getting is the way. Generosity begets generosity. All it takes is for you to choose to believe. I love that video because it visually demonstrates that whole idea of giving and receiving. I love the, the faucet, of turning off the faucet, because that's the truth, right? When we're in a, a place of lack, no matter where it is in our life, the tendency is to turn it off and to hold back out of fear instead of to move with it and to generously give to it. It's a spiritual law that says the opposite. So... Um, Whatever it is you're needing in life, that is what needs to be given. If it's friends, if it's love, if it's creativity, if it's money. So um, for me, I have, I have writer's block. And the only way I can get through it is if I sit down and start writing. Now I'll go to any length not to sit down and start writing. It's like, oh, I think I have to check emails or hmm, maybe I should run to the store and get something. But the truth is, what I notice is that when I sit down and I start writing, it starts flowing. So I have to give my attention, I have to give my time to writing in order for it to start flowing and to start moving. It is priming the pump. When I'm feeling disconnected from my friends, when I'm thinking, ah, I haven't heard from so-and-so in a long time, I guess they might have forgot about me, it's like, well, I guess I could call and see how they're doing. And then I'm feeling connected again. So it, again, it's that, it's that moving forward. So spring cleaning for the soul is about uh, giving life and having it abundantly. It is about giving to that which is lacking. Spring cleaning for the soul is also about releasing clutter. Possessions can have weight. They can clog movement of energy. Now, when my parents died, I got all their stuff from their house. They lived in the same house for over 35 years. And I remember going and visiting them about 10 years before my dad died and saying, let's go through the kitchen and get rid of stuff that you no longer need. And we went through pots and pans and everything and I got it all ready to be sent out. And my dad says, where are you putting that stuff? I said, well, I was going to give it away. He goes, well, let's put it in the basement because we might need it for later. So, of course, when he died, I had to go down to the basement, which was piled with all kinds of stuff that someday he was going to get around to borrowing or using or whatever. And so I ended up having to release all that, but I also brought a lot of their possessions home because of sentimental value. Then my kids moved out, and I have their possessions, and they have sentimental value. And what I notice about the possessions is they have weight. You know, they carry emotional weight. They carry, and it would seem an easy task to just go in and say, all right, I'm going to clear this out, but I'll pick up a little doll that the kids have no interest in, and I can't part with it, right? It's like, but this is Jordan's clown. This was like his best friend for two or three years. I, I can't, like, throw clown out. I have to keep clown, so I put him in plastic, and I'm not sure where I'm going to put him next, but he's moving around. But it is true, right? Those possessions that we have, with it, when, we, when we have clutter, um, it, it ends up uh, sticking. And, you know, probably we see it most when we watch a show, Hoarders, right? I mean, that's like an ex extreme example. And you can see how people get stuck. And maybe we're not to that level, but our stuff helps, keeps us stuck as well. So one of the things that we're going to do here on March 30th is um, we're going to have a uh, light potlatch ceremony, sort of. So we're going to have tables set up along the side. And what I would like you to do over the next couple of weeks is look through your possessions and choose one thing of value that you haven't touched or worn or connected with for at least two years. At least two years. And I invite you to bring that one thing in good condition of good value, and we're just going to set them out on the table so that we can circulate our possessions, so that we can release that stuck energy. And then you're free to come and pick something up that, that may be calling to you. It's a way of, again, of circulating that energy. Spring cleaning for the soul is about 
being seen, heard, and loved. It's about letting go of fear. So we are having our home groups, as Lene already said, and they're beginning the first week of April. And the idea is that you can meet with people in your home, and we are uh, intentionally wanting the groups to be no more than 10. Because what we're finding is that when uh, the groups are smaller, uh, but no more than 10, people tend to go more deep with their sharing. They're more honest and, and, and willing to be more vulnerable. And that can be a scary place. Yesterday we had our kickoff. We had about 35 people here. And we did an exercise where I asked people to write down their strengths, the things that they were the most proud of in their lives, and their successes. So it was, a, it was a way to reflect on that. But then what we did is we all stood up and we stood in two lines and each person had to stand up and either read or tell the group what they were most proud of in their lives for, what they were uh, most successful at, what their gifts were, what people loved about them. And then they were to walk down the aisle with people lined up on both sides well, we all spoke a word of blessing. I said, these are your angels. These are your angels. Now, do you think that was an easy thing for people to do? Absolutely not. It was not an easy thing to do. For one, to kind of stand up and say, hey, this is what I'm really good at. It's one thing to write it and look at it. It's another thing to stand up and to say it in front of a group and to say it publicly. And it takes courage to be seen, heard, and loved. And that's what we're asking in our home groups, is that you have the courage to be seen, heard, and loved. All right, so I'm going to lead into um, this idea of right now being seen, heard, and loved. And I would like for us to connect as a community. This is an opportunity for us to come together. And what I'm going to ask you to do, and we're going to take five minutes to do this, is to find a partner and I would like you to think about what is it that you're lacking in your life right now? What is it that you need more of? Just think about that for a minute. What is it that you are lacking in your life right now? And what is it that you need to give to that? Okay, so in sharing with another person, no advice, right? No advice but simply being a listening presence. So now, if you would, look around you. Find, uh, if, you're, if you're willing to stretch and be with somebody you don't know, that would be great if you came with somebody, but you can be with the person you're with as well. And some of us may need to stand up and walk a little bit to find a partner. So I'm giving you five minutes. Please find a partner. What is lacking in your life, and what do you need to give to that? Okay, and I would like you to finish up if you could. You can always continue this conversation at breakfast downstairs. You meet a new friend. So come on back to your seat. So it helps to speak it out loud, doesn't it? Doesn't it help to think, okay, this is what I'm lacking in my life right now, and this is what I need to give to that. So whatever it is that you need to give, sooner rather than later works better, I think. So whatever that is that you feel that you need to give, I invite you to give it today, to give it this afternoon. If it's friendship that you're, you're, you seem to be lacking, call your friends. Hang out for breakfast and, and meet some new people. Um, but But... Spring is about taking action, and it'll prime the pump and start the flow in the right direction. So our theme this year has been Soul Trek, which is based uh, loosely on Star Trek. And when Gene Roddenberry created Star, Tre Star Trek, the starship was meant to be a metaphor for planet Earth. The crew was meant to symbolize all the different peoples of the earth. So Lieutenant Uhura represented Africa. Scotty represented Europe. Kirk, North America. Uh, when Star Trek came out, it was at the heart, uh, the height of the Cold War. And yet we had Chekhov, the Russian. 
Sulu represented Asia, and what's interesting is they had to be very careful about the name that they chose for him, because they didn't want it to sound Chinese or Japanese or Korean. They wanted it to be, you know, more generic, and so they found on a map a place called the Sulu Sea, and they thought that's perfect because the sea just kind of encompasses everything. Now, I did not, I don't and haven't seen South America represented in and the Latin community in the first enterprise in Starship, so. But George Takai said this, he was on uh, Democracy Now! this week, he said, the strength of the Starship is in its diversity of people from different parts of this planet, different cultures, races, languages, faiths, and ideas working together in concert and working out differences and finding common ground. And that's what's going to move the ship forward. And is that not true? That's what's going to move this spaceship Earth forward, is our diversity, is our differences, and, and finding the commonalities and the solutions to our problems. That's what moves this starship forward. On Friday, the Seeds of Compassion, who brought in the Dalai Lama and Bishop Tutu back about seven or eight years ago, hosted an event at St. Mark's on Friday, and their speaker was Karen Armstrong. And I was so impressed by Seattle. I was so impressed by the intelligence and the compassion of the people that live in this city and how um, we are seeking answers to some of the, some of the challenges that we, we don't face alone but, but are faced in every city in the country. And uh, we had breakout groups and some of the issues we were looking at and discussing is homelessness, at-risk youth, education, wellness and health, social economic justice, alternative economies. And, you know, uh, I think they're going to meet again in, in April, but it was this think tank of people coming together and just sharing different ideas about how can we solve these problems that are in the world today. It was, the gathering was like a mini starship of Seattle, of people coming together to move forward. And that's what happens in community when you just shared your, what you're, you're, you're willing to give to in this space. It kind of gives it texture and weight in a good way that we can move it forward. So we know that giving is a spiritual law and it applies to prosperity, to time, to love, to our talents. So if you need love, give love. If you need friends, be a friend. If you need money, give money. And if you need creativity, start a project. <laughs> Preaching the choir here. Now that daylight savings time and spring are here, it's time to clear out the winter cobwebs. And not just the ones that are in your house, but the ones that are in your head, the ones that are in your body. Go through and declutter and release your possessions and bring one thing of value here on March 30th. I invite you to sign up for a home group, to be willing to be seen, heard, and loved. Spring cleaning of the soul says, let go and create space. Spring cleaning for the soul asks, what do you need in your life right now? Don't hold on to it, give to it. For the measure that you give will be the measure that you get back. May it be so. Make it so. <laughs> Make it.